Welcome to Contextual Electronics. My name is Chris Gamble. Today we're going to be going over KiCad 5.1 or the first look at KiCad 5.1 because I have upgraded and I'm still trying to figure out a lot of it myself. Uh, it actually, you know, a lot of the changes kind of pop up at random. You, you're like, wait, wait, that, that was different before. Uh, and this is very different from the, the transition from 4.0 to 5.0 uh, because there are no format differences. The file formats are all the same. It's really like a lot of things have kind of shifted. And so let's take a look at some of what we're actually talking about here. Uh, we're going to actually take a look at the schematic first. One of the things that I have noticed is that a lot of the, the context menus have changed, and that's one of the things that kind of pops out to me. So if I mouse over a component like this and hit E, this all looks different to me. Uh, and so a lot of the fields have changed. Um, obviously, we have some more text, some more text options here. Uh, there are new buttons sometimes as well. So you see Spice Model. I don't believe that was in the old one. And so that is now uh, in here. And so I have actually not played with the Spice much at all here yet. Uh, I still use LT Spice when I need it, but I'm probably going to try it at some point here, and I hope that it keeps getting better. Uh, and so that's kind of one of the main things that I've seen here. Um, there are some other dialogue menus that have changed as well, <clears throat> but for the most part, it feels pretty similar. Like I said, it just kind of catches you in the edges. The one big one, let's go over the one big one that I've noticed, is that when I go to like layer setup, right? So say I want to go and figure out how do I go from a four layer, two layer to a four layer board. I showed you that in a past video. Well. There used to be a, a menu for this, and, and it's gone. And that's kind of the thing. So I actually, when I first upgraded here, I, uh, I actually had upgraded a while ago. I, was, I went on to the Nightlies, and I made a video where I was just staring at the camera. I was staring at the screen for like five minutes. I'm like, I, what, I don't, what's, it's, something's wrong here. What is different? And so uh, this one definitely caught me up. Uh, and so hopefully it doesn't for you. But if you want to change anything about the board, there is now a new button. So this is the board setup button that used to be a menu. It is now not a menu. And now if you want to get to that as well, you have to go to the board setup option here. So that is the main thing. Let's go dive into that. This is where you're going to change. Uh, so you see this is a four layer board. Parts on the front and back. This is where you can change your layers, change your layer names as well. If you want to make them signal or power, that's fine. Uh, same thing with like text. So when you want to change your text, uh, your text uh, sizes, you can do that here as well. Um, net classes, so this is where you set up your, you know, so say you have, well, I guess in this case we have a default and a power, and so I have these set as different things. So if I had assigned a net to power, like 3v3 is here, then anytime I start start routing a trace there, it's going to start, you know, routing with this, uh, with these uh, characteristics instead. So instead of having a 0.254 millimeter track width, it's now going to be 0.606, 696. Uh, and uh, in doing so, basically, you know, this is this is a net class thing. We've gone over that in past videos, but this is now in a different location. Same thing here. If you want to make custom vias and track widths, you can do that here as well. And then finally, the solder mask and paste stuff. So basically, that was this was all one menu, and that menu is now gone. Uh, and so it's all now in the board setup. That is what tripped me up, and it will definitely trip you up at first as well. Uh, it's not bad. It's just different. So, um, <clears throat> so that's one of the main things. Again, the, uh, the context menus have changed here as well. So if you mouse over here to E, so this looks different as well. So you can go and change your text, oops, change your text uh, values and thicknesses and all that stuff here, even the layers. That's kind of nice. Uh, and, and I do kind of like that. Uh, and then there's other new tools here as well. Um, there is import. No, well, where was it? It's now possible on this one at least. Not export. There was an import. Uh, is it graphics? Yes. So this is a vector graphics file. I, I think this is kind of. I find this to be a little bit confusing. I think vector graphics. I think something like an SVG. This is actually going to be a, uh, a board outline, and so you can do that kind of thing. So DXF you can import, um, but. Uh, but that helps a little bit as well. So it's just a kind of a, a different way of saying it. Instead of saying uh, DXF import and now it says graphic import, I, I do hope that that's moving towards an SVG import because I, I really like working with SVGs. Nothing else has changed here in terms of uh, fabrication uh, outputs. Same thing, the, uh, the, I don't think any of this stuff has changed either. You can, uh, I'm, I'm really hoping for manufacturing outputs to change in the future. I'm really looking for an ODB++ export. Uh, that's something I'm interested in. Let's open up the 3D viewer, see if that's changed at all. I don't believe it's changed too much. Yeah, that all looks the same. Render options, that all looks the same. So I think this may have changed very little. Um, 
which is nice. And so it's it's going to be one of those things where you just kind of keep finding new small things. Like some some things are like uh, this is like a new graphic here, right? And so this is this is that same. This is the F8 menu uh, that I don't think you can actually still. Let's see F8. Uh, whoops, F8. Yeah. So this is still. I think you need to click the button here. I'm not sure if there's a a shortcut for that. Let's see tools. Yeah, I see, there's no shortcut for this one. If you do hit F8 in the schematic, it does that same thing. So if we're over in the schematic editor, the E schema, I hit F8. It basically pops over to this menu, and that's great. But if you want to do it from this menu, then you have to click the button here or go to Tools and then do Update from Schematic, that kind of thing. Uh, external plugins still are the same. The routing is still the same, I think. Um, let's see if this... No, those all look the same as well. And... Uh, I did see some differences. Let's go over to the footprint editor real quick. I saw some differences in the footprint editor. I believe that the default view of the footprint editor, I'm starting to, you know, basically, my memory is starting to uh, play tricks on me. I'm not sure it, which one came first, but some of the, the footprint editor menus look a little, or not the menu, sorry, the, the browser looks a little different, like the default browser. So I believe that's actually been unified between the schematic, uh, the symbol editor, and the footprint editor now. And let's take a look here to see if that's been the case. Okay. That felt like that would really took a long time to load up. But I believe that this, this default view now is a little bit different. So now we're, we're automatically into this browser view versus just going into a footprint. I don't believe this window was here in the past. So now we can just go in and just click to open up one of the libraries. The libraries in the default install have continued to improve many props to the library team. Um, like, for example, I've you know struggled with this in the past. I've made an ESP32 footprint before. This is a great looking footprint. You know, you go and drop this in your design. And doing this and not only that, they, they do keep out areas. So basically, this is they've extended their, uh, this is the, uh, what's it called, the courtyard. And then they, they have keep out zones marked. Obviously, they're, they're not actual keep out zones. You need to actually put the keep out zones in your layout, but at least it's marked. And that's that's a great starting point. So things are really, really uh, looking good on the library side of things here. Obviously, this is a specific footprint. There are still generic footprints like this as well. Um, and you know, that's up to you to, to assign which one's which and double check your spacing and everything else. I've definitely made those mistakes. I'm sure I will in the future. But I do like how, uh, I do like how this is the default. The default goes into the, this, uh, this browser view, and that's really useful here. Otherwise, though, I don't. Uh, I guess some of the other things, like again, like the dialogues, I keep thinking of. So mouse over hit E. Like the dialogues keep looking different here, and that um, I'm okay with that. You know, it's just basically a different look to it. And there's stuff about the the Python build. That, that's one of the reasons that they did this whole thing in the first place. So Python has changed, uh, and I think they've the one of the reasons they had to do the the point one release instead of just uh, going straight to six point is because some of the software stuff in the back end. Has changed. So some of this is structural, but in the in the meantime, there's been a bunch of changes in you know the dialogues and and how things look here. I will continue to poke through it. I'm using this every day in my professional work as a consultant, and uh, I'm you know I'm kind of discovering new things as I go. Like I said, sometimes it's hard to even remember. Once you're in a program every day, you start to lose track of what has changed because it, you normalize to it so quickly. So hopefully that you take you know you take comfort in that as well. That if you're using it, yes, it, the first time through it's going to be like wait wait where did, where did they put this button? But once you start to get a little bit more used to it, you'll kind of figure out where things go. Uh, and and I think they're all positive changes here. I'm always grateful to the KiCad team. And if you are, you can always go and support the uh, KiCad project here as well. There's a uh, donation button over on the KiCad-PCB.org page that takes you over to CERN. And you can donate money there. And if you want to support uh, the community as well, we're having a conference called KiCon in late April, April 26th and 27th here in Chicago. So you can also support and meet all the developers there. So that's all for this video. We'll be going over more changes to KiCad 5.1 in the future, definitely as I keep using it here. Hopefully you give it a shot as well and you let us know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching.